I have an issue because I feel like black women have been brainwashed into only accepting the European idea of, Standard of, of, beauty. of what beauty is. Yep, the long straight hair. Long straight hair, right? Now, you know, we can't have anything to ourselves that we can call our own because they're got all tanning booths. Now they're trying to get brown. They're putting injections but in we their have lips. To realize they're the putting injections in their behinds, and we we were ridiculed. No, I know. For that, for years. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is pretty much a part two to the video, White Influencers in Blackface. Um, a part two or a spinoff, if you will. Um, I just want to bring some clarity on my stance because I noticed a lot of people were confused. I don't know why, but they were a bit confused. Um... So I'm going to talk about tanning creams versus bleaching creams in this video. I'm going to talk about um, why women, black women specifically, certain black women in certain cultures, bleach, wear blonde wigs, as people like to say. That's always the, the rebuttal. Oh, but what about y'all black girls that wear blonde wigs? That's always the rebuttal. Always. That's the only thing they could come back with. Y'all wear blonde wigs. Okay. So we'll talk about that in this video. Um, I posted the question on my Twitter. Why is tanning socially accepted and bleaching isn't? No one was yet to <laughs> answer that question. One person said because tanning is natural. So we'll talk about that as well. So let's talk about weaves and bleaching. Um, what a lot of people who use the rebuttal of, oh, but y'all wear weave. Y'all don't know the history behind it, which is why y'all say that. And honestly, you sound dumb. And that's your response in my comment section. I'm like, okay, dummy. Ignorant. Has no knowledge. <laughs> Let me stop. But for real. Because you as an adult. You as an adult. Like I know teenagers that know this. Kids that know this. I knew this as a kid actually. I was taught this as a kid. So I don't understand how you as an adult. Would use that as a rebuttal. So I'm not going to go into depth. Depth. Um, about this topic because it is very deep and we'll be here like for the rest of the year just talking about weaves when i know you ain't got time for that i ain't got time for that but long story short google the word assimilation society was not built for black people black people were seen as property black people were seen as slaves worthless pieces of nothing so society was not built for black people to live and to thrive our ancestors had to fight for that that wasn't a, a, a birth given right in this country. That was something that had to be fought for. And even once slavery ended, please don't forget there was still segregation. So there was always this, you do not fit into society. You do not belong a part of this society. And though there were many that fought the power and that were rebellious, there were many that chose to assimilate to feed their families, to get jobs. And Google the word assimilation. You think black women woke up one day and said, oh yeah, let me buy a perm. No. Black women had to do what they had to do to feed their children, to buy homes, to save money, to be financially stable. Black women had to assimilate. We had to become a part of this society that never saw us as people. But please, please let us not forget the natural hair movement and black women just learning to take care of their natural hair, learning to love their natural hair. And a part of the learning process is also protecting our hair. 
because we have texture in our hair our hair is more susceptible to breakage so we cannot wear our hair out every single day y'all swear our hair can grow it's not that it can't grow we have to retain the length we have to find other ways to retain our length because if we don't protect our ends our ends will break off then y'all call us bullheaded and please for the love of god let's stop acting like only black women wear weaves and wigs let's let's just stop it come on now all women from across the board of all races wear wigs wear weaves clip-ons a ponytail come on now and it's not always for longer hair sometimes it's for shorter hair sometimes you want to do a color you don't want to damage your hair so you'll put a color a color wig on color weaving why y'all always pointing a finger at us oh well y'all wear weave sis who don't who don't but the history of why we started wearing it is different from why you started wearing it heavy heavy baby heavy heavy now, I want to talk about tanning versus bleaching. I wrote this question on my Twitter, then posted it to my Instagram. Can someone tell me why tanning is more socially accepted than bleaching? The most answers I've gotten was, oh, because tanning is natural. Hmm. Okay. Listen, I don't care what y'all say to make yourself feel better at night. Pumping foam, pumping black foam onto a glove and smearing it on your body is not natural spraying yourself is not natural sitting in a heated bed tanning bed that that i'm sorry that's not natural what the sun does to you or the lack of sun does to you yes that's natural the lack of sun for some people will cause them to be lighter exposure of sun will cause you to be darker that is natural i personally believe that a pale woman buying products to make her skin darker hating her pale skin oh i'm so pale what's wrong with being pale like that's what i would really say to someone that was just like oh my god i'm so pale but in the white community when people say oh my god i'm so pale the answer is girl like let me recommend this good tanning cream so that you can be dark but if a black girl said i dang i don't you know i hate saying things like this but i really want this job and i just feel like they only hire white girls. I don't know. I just don't see any women of color on staff. I hope, you know, I really hope I could get this job. No one's going to say, girl, just, you know, bleach your skin. Try to get it real light as possible. Find the blondest wig you could find to put on and good luck. Good luck on your interview. No, <laughs> you got to go as you, baby. You got to walk in there with that black skin and you just got to hope and pray that your resume will speak for itself, that you could sell it and get that job but if, if we were to be honest with y'all a lot of times in a lot of positions we feel like because we are dark we won't get certain opportunities so for you to wear darkness it's not fair it's not fair that you could put on blackness and succeed and i can live in blackness and struggle and honestly everyone loves to throw around the racist word these tanning companies are racist are you kidding me are y'all reading these labels like seriously the directions oh those are the directions listen to rap music and you'll be black that's that's literally what it says put on blackface and listen to black music and you'll be a black girl without having to live a black girl struggle though Ooh, best of both worlds no we ain't doing that but the same way bleaching creams have horrible side effects, so do these tanning creams, these tanning procedures, these gummies, these shots. These are all toxic. They're very toxic. Like above everything, above just y'all trying to be black, like think about your health. So I know that tanning is a part of your culture and I know that you see it as normal because everyone does it. I'm here to tell you it's not normal. And when you're smearing on creams that make you shades that you will never naturally be, that is blackface. You're putting on blackness as if it's a costume. You're wearing it as if it's the outfit choice, if it, as if it's the look of the day. My look of the day is 
uh, caramel. I'm going to be caramel black today and buy up all the caramel shades in Sephora. They want black music, but not from black artists. They want black fashion, but not from black designers. Let that sink in. They'll take blackness from anybody but a black person. Think about that.